Sutra. In each end, there are names of Buddhas as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. Each name represents Tathagatas as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He has complete knowledge of how each and every Tathagata will bring forth his initial resolve for Bodhi, make vows and practices, make offerings to all Buddhas, tame sentient beings, and speak drama for his congregations. He knows the length of each Buddha's life, his spiritual powers of transformation, and even his entry into non-residual Paranibbana, the length of time his dharma will remain after he enters Paranibbana, and the stupas and temples that will be constructed with various adornments, causing sentient beings to plant and nurture good roots. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's fourth wisdom based spiritual power of knowing future ends of time. Commentary In each end, there are names of Buddhas as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. Each name represents Tathagatas as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He has complete knowledge of how each and every Tathagata will bring forth his initial resolve for Bodhi, make vows and practices, make offerings to all Buddhas, tame sentient beings, and speak drama for his congregations. He knows the length of each Buddha's life, his spiritual powers of transformation, and even his entry into non-residual Paranibbana, the length of time his dharma will remain after he enters Paranibbana, and the, the stupas and temples that will be constructed with various adornments, such as the seven precious things, causing sentient beings to plant and nurture various good roots. We are providing opportunities for sentient beings to plant good roots when we build stupas and temples and to plant those good roots deeply. The Bodhisattva can know all of this. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's fourth wisdom based spiritual power of knowing future ends of time. This great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas knows all ends to the, to the end of future time. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha with the perfection of the unobstructed purity of the heavenly ear. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva's hearing is perfect, extensive, keen, and penetrating, unhindered, and unimpeded in its reach. The heavenly ear is fully endowed and accomplished. With self mastery, he can hear and not hear any or all sounds as he chooses. Disciples of the Buddha, Buddhas as many as just modes in ineffable, the ineffable Buddha lands exist in the East. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva can accept and practice all of the profound, vast, pure Dharma with its various distinctions, limitless experience, and limitless skillful means that all these Buddhas proclaim, reveal, impart, espoused, establish, teach and use to discipline beings, recollect and analyze. Further, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva can remember and uphold all of this drama, both the meaning as well as the words. Whether it is spoken for a single person or an assembly, and including the Buddha's tone of voice, their articulation, their wisdom, their understanding, their manifestations, their ability to tame their states of mind, their ground of being, and their ways of transcendence. He never forgets this drama, nor dis dismisses it, nor severs it, nor retreats from it, nor becomes confused. He explains this drama for others so that they in turn awaken to understanding and never forget a single word or sentence of this drama, just as he is able to do this in the East. He can do the same in the south, west, north, the four intermediate directions, as well as above and below. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's fifth wisdom based spiritual power of the unobstructed purity, the unobstructed purity of the heavenly ear. 
commentary, disciples of the Buddha with the perfection of the unobstructed purity of the heavenly ear. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva's hearing is perfect, extensive, keen, and penetrating, unhindered and unimpeded in its reach, and the heavenly ear is fully endowed and accomplished with self-mastery. He can hear or not hear any or all sounds as he chooses. Disciples of the Buddha Buddha says many as just most in ineffable, the ineffable Buddha lands exist in the East. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva can accept and practice all of the profound, vast, pure drama with its various distinctions, limitless expedients, and limitless skillful means that all these Buddhas proclaim, reveal, impart, inspire, establish, teach, use to disciplined beings, recollect, and analyze. Further, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva can remember and uphold all of this drama, both the meaning as well as the words, whether it is spoken for a single person or an assembly, and including the Buddha's tone of voice, their articulation, their wisdom, their understanding, their manifestations, their ability to tame their states of mind, their ground of being, and their ways of transcendence. He never forgets this drama, nor dismisses it, nor severs it, nor retreats from it, nor becomes confused. For example, when we don't really understand true drama, we simply follow the sentence and ways of the world rather than practicing transcendental drama. Transcendental drama and worldly phenomena are opposites. He explains this drama for others so that they in turn awaken to understanding and never forget a single word or sentence of this drama. Buddhas and Bodhisattvas espoused the drama for others so that they become enlightened. Not only do they themselves not retreat or forget, they also make sure that others do not forget or lose it. Just as he is able to do this in the East, he can do the same in the South, West, North, the four intermediate directions, as well as above and below. The situation in each place is the same as in the East. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's fifth wisdom based spiritual power of the unobstructed purity of the heavenly ear. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, when dwelling in spiritual power, devoid of substance, spiritual power, devoid of effort, spiritual power based in equality, vast spiritual power, infinite spiritual power, spiritual power, devoid of reliance, spiritual power that accord with one's wishes, spiritual power that arises, spiritual power that does not arise, spiritual power that does not retreat, spiritual power that is not cut off, indestructible spiritual power, increasing spiritual powers, and spiritual powers that reach wherever they are sent. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva hears the names of Buddhas in extremely distant worlds, that is, in countless worlds, measureless worlds, even worlds as many as just most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He sees himself in each Buddha's presence as soon as he hears that Buddha's name. Those worlds may be upright or inverted, each unique in shape, local and features. Boundless and unobstructed is the assortment of lands and epochs, each adorned with infinite meritorious virtues. Every Tathagata will appear in these worlds to manifest spiritual, spiritual transformations and praise the unique names of the meekless and countless Buddhas. Once this Bodhisattva hears the name of a Tathagata, he sees himself in that Buddha's presence without leaving his original place. There he bows, pays respect, attends, and makes offerings to that Buddha. He asks about the drama of Bodhisattvas and enters the Buddha's wisdom. He thoroughly and utterly knows the assemblies and the drama spoken in Bodhimandas in all Buddha lands, yet remains unattached. 
In this way, he passes through as many ends as does the most ineffable, the ineffable Buddha lands, reaching all places throughout the ten directions without going anywhere. Nonetheless, he travels through every land to see the Buddhas, to listen to the drama, and to inquire about the path without pausing, giving up, resting, or growing weary. He cultivates the Bodhisattva's practice and realizes his vast vows. To fulfill his vows, he never retreats, for he does not wish the vast seed nature of the Tathagatas to be cut off. This is called a Bodhisattva Masatva's sixth wisdom-based spiritual power of being devoid of substance and unmoving as one reaches to all Buddha lands. Commentary, Disciples of the Buddha, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva again calls out, All of you disciples of the Buddha, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva may be dwelling in spiritual power devoid of substance, spiritual power devoid of effort, spiritual power that isn't fabricated, vast spiritual power, infinite spiritual power, spiritual power devoid of reliance, spiritual power that accord with one's wishes, spiritual power that arises, spiritual power that does not arise, spiritual power that does not retreat, spiritual power that is not cut off, indestructible spiritual power, increasing spiritual powers and spiritual powers that reach wherever they are sent, the spiritual power to go anywhere as one wishes. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva can hear very far. He hears the names of Buddhas in extremely distant worlds, that is, in countless worlds, measureless worlds, even worlds as many as does most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He sees himself in each Buddha's presence, in the Bodhimanda of that Buddha, as soon as he hears that Buddha's name. Those worlds may be upright or inverted, each unique in shape, local and features. Boundless and unobstructed is the assortment of lands and epochs, each adorned with infinite meritorious virtues. Every Tathagata will appear in these worlds to manifest spiritual transformations and praise the unique names of the meatless and countless Buddhas. In every Buddha land, Buddhas appear to reveal the Buddha's spiritual transformations to install the meatless league and countless many names of Buddhas. Once this Bodhisattva hears the name of a Tathagata, he sees himself in that Buddha's presence without leaving his original place, without having to leave where he was situated, and using his spiritual powers, he sees his own body at that Buddha's place. There he bows, pays respect, attends, and makes offerings to that Buddha. He asks about the drama of Bodhisattvas and enters the Buddha's wisdom, he thoroughly and utterly knows the, the assemblies and the drama spoken in Bodhimandas in all Buddha lands, yet remains unattached. He has not the least bit of attachment or inability to let go. In this way, he passes through as many ends as does most in ineffable, the ineffable Buddha lands, reaching all places throughout the ten directions without going anywhere. Bodhisattvas can universally reach as many worlds as there are places in the ten directions throughout as long a time as compass as numerous as dust modes. Although he travels everywhere, his fundamental substance is still, so he remains immobile too. Nonetheless, he travels to every land to see the Buddhas, to draw near and admire the Buddhas in the ten directions to listen to the drama at the feet of each Buddha, and to inquire about the path. He requests the Buddhas throughout the ten directions explain the wondrous path that leads to liberation from birth and death, and he does this without pausing, giving up. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva never stops working. He works without resting or growing weary. A Bodhisattva is never tired. Unlike we who get tired after listening to the sutras for a while, he does not become tired. 
He always cultivates the Bodhisattva's practice and makes and realizes his vast vows. To fulfill his great vows and the Bodhisattva path, he never retreats, for he does not wish the vast seed nature of the Tathagatas to be cut off. He wishes never to stop the process of creating seeds for Buddhahood. This is called a Bodhisattva Masatva's sixth wisdom-based spiritual power of being devoid of substance and unmoving as one reaches to all Buddha lands. This is a great Bodhisattva's sixth kind of spiritual power grounded in wisdom, which is being devoid of substance and movement and yet being able to be in all Buddha lands. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha with the wisdom-based spiritual power of clearly discerning sentient beings' words and voices. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva understands the various spoken words of sentient beings in words as many as dust most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He understands the language of sages, the language of those who are not yet the sages, the language of heavenly beings, the language of dragons, language of yakshas, gandavas, asuras, garudas, kinaras, mahoragas, humans and non-humans, and so forth, so the languages of ineffably ineffable sentient beings. He understands all their individual expressions and its distinctions. In any world that this Bodhisattva enters, he discerns the dispositions and desires of all beings therein. He communicates in ways suited to these beings' dispositions and desires so that they completely understand without a doubt. Just as sunshine appears to illumine all forms so that those with eyes will see clearly, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva is the same way. With the ability to proficiently differentiate all spoken words, he deeply enters all clouds of verbal communication. All of his speech aims to ensure that those intelligent and wise in the world understand. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's seventh wisdom-based spiritual power of clearly discerning all words and phrasing. Commentary, Disciples of the Buddha with the wisdom-based spiritual power of clearly discerning sentient beings' words and voices. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva understands the various spoken words of sentient beings in words as many as dust most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He is able to know the language of all kinds of sentient beings throughout so many Buddha lands and so many worlds regardless of what type of sentient beings one may be. The Bodhisattva understands that one speech. The Bodhisattva understands the spoken words of all sentient beings intimately. He understands the language of sages, which include the speech of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Nahas, that is, the words of sages in the four Dharma realms of sages. He understands the language of those who are not yet sages, that is, those who have not reached the stage of the four Dharma realms of sages. He understands the language of heavenly beings. There are various heavens with various types of words. He understands the language of dragons. Dragons have the language of dragons. He comprehends the language of yakshas, gandavas, asuras, garudas, kinaras, mahoragas, humans and non-humans and so forth to words of ineffably ineffable sentient beings. He understands all their individual expressions and distinctions. He may, they may use verbal or wordless expressions to communicate as well as various distinctions. A Bodhisattva understands each and every kind of utterance. In any world that this Bodhisattva enters, he knows the sentient beings of that world. He discerns the dispositions and desires of all beings therein. He knows their preferences, preferences, desires, and cravings. He communicates in their language in ways suited to these beings' dispositions and desires according to what he has contemplated, so that they completely understand without a doubt, without skepticism. 
Just as sunshine appears to illumine all forms and all colors show up so that those with eyes will see the sun clearly. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva, a great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas is the same way. Like the sun, he also appears to shine upon all forms and ensures that all those with eyes see. With the ability to proficiently differentiate all spoken words, he deeply enters all clouds of verbal communication, expressions resembling clouds. All of his speech aims to ensure that those intelligent and wise in the world understand thoroughly. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's seventh wisdom-based spiritual power of clearly discerning all words and phrasing. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha with the wisdom-based spiritual power of producing infinite asamkhiyas of the dawned physical bodies. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva knows that all dhammas are apart from characteristics of form, being free from distinctive characteristics, various characteristics, limitless characteristics, and differentiated characteristics, and not being characterized as green, yellow, red, or white. A Bodhisattva who enters the Dharma realm in this way manifests a body that takes on various forms, boundless forms, infinite forms, pure forms, adult forms, all pervasive forms, incomparable forms, all illumining forms, enhanced forms, harmonious forms, forms replete with various features, forms removed from all vice, forms of awesome impact, honorable forms, inexhaustible forms, forms of intermingling wonders, extremely stately forms, incalculable forms, well-guarded forms, forms capable of maturation, forms that adapt and transform, unobstructed forms, thoroughly lucid forms, unsullied forms, extremely translucent forms, forms of courageous mind, forms of impossible experience, incorruptible forms, flawless forms, and clouded forms, well settled forms, magnificently ornamented forms, forms with various stately features, various forms of subsidiary fine characteristics, forms of dignified nobility, forms of marvelous states, well polished and glistening forms, forms of a pure and profound mind, forms of blazing luster, forms of supreme grandeur, uninterrupted forms, independent forms, much less forms, forms filling inexpressibly many Buddha lands, increasing forms, steadfast and receptive forms, forms of supreme virtue, forms of complying with the heart's joy, forms of pure understanding, forms of collected wonders, forms of adroit determination and impacted forms. Commentary Universal worthy Bodhisattva again, again called out, All of you disciples of the Buddha, a great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas, with the wisdom-based spiritual power of producing infinite asamkhiyas of adorned physical bodies, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva knows that all dhammas are apart from characteristics of form, being free from distinctive characteristics, various characteristics, limitless characteristics, and differentiated characteristics, and not being characterized as green, yellow, red, or white. A Bodhisattva who enters all forms of the Dharma realm in this way manifests a body that takes on various forms, using the Bodhisattva body to manifest various forms. He manifests boundless forms, infinite forms, pure forms, adorned forms, all pervasive forms, incomparable forms, all illumining forms, enhanced forms, harmonious forms, forms replete with various features, forms removed from all vice, forms of awesome impact, honorable forms, inexhaustible forms, forms of intermingling wonders, extremely stately forms, incalculable forms, well-guarded forms, 
forms capable of maturation, forms that adapt and transform, he manifests in the form of other sentient beings, unobstructed forms, thoroughly lucid forms, unsullied forms, extremely translucent forms, forms of courageous mind, forms of inconceivable experience, incorruptible forms, flawless forms, unclouded forms, well-settled forms, magnificently ornamented forms, forms with various stately features, various forms of subsidiary fine characteristics, forms of dignified nobility, forms of marvelous states, well-polished and glistening forms, forms of a pure and profound mind, forms of blazing, blazing luster, forms of supreme grandeur, uninterrupted forms, independent forms, much less forms, forms filling inexpressibly many Buddha lands, increasing forms, steadfast and receptive forms, forms of supreme virtue, forms complying with the heart's joy, forms of pure understanding, these various wondrous forms, forms of collected wonders, forms of adroit determination, unimpeded forms. The Bodhisattva manifests these forms constantly.